I found music at the age of about 14. I was a very troubled and restless teenager back then. I remember listening to this piece of music and it said things to me that I didn't even know about myself. It lit a spark and I began to play my guitar louder than ever. I imitated for a little while my favorite bands and even tried different genres of music. That didn't really work out for me. So I tried to make my own music. And after a while, even that didn't work. So, I just began playing the guitar in strange ways, trying to change the tuning of the strings, trying to hit the guitar instead of strum it. And after a little while, I decided I will give up on songs and just experiment and experiment. School finished, I didn't go to university, I traveled. And I began searching for an instrument that would truly resonate with me. Something which had richness in tone and color, but also depth. Something which had its own story, and we could meet and create our own little world together. So, the sitar, the sarod, the rabab, the veena, all of these in instruments really excited me. But, the discipline, the dedication, the devotion, and the rules really spooked me out. I didn't want something that would constrain me, so I just kept on traveling. And I ended up in Turkey with a musical troupe. There I was very fortunate to attend a Sufi whirling ceremony, a sema. There I met the Jaili Tambur. Thin, tall, old and wise, I instantly started looking for a maker, and within a few days, I found someone who was ready to make the instrument for me. And this person modified the instrument a bit from the original version, which was a bit confusing in the beginning. But then I thought, if he can modify the instrument to get the sound that he wants to hear, I too could modify an instrument to get the sound that I want to hear. So I've modified this instrument extensively, but now I'll play for you how I'd heard it back in the Sufi ceremony. my travels in India and abroad, I noticed that each region had, had its own distinct sound. Of course, there's melody and there's rhythm, but there's also something more, the tonality, the texture, the timbre, and the way the sound is decorated. That is called ornamentation. Ornamentation is a mirror of the ecology. So the way the land shapes the sound of a certain region. For example, in the Middle East, there's the desert. There's the feeling of longing, feeling of yearning. 
In Tuva, in Mongolia and Siberia, one of the most coldest places in the world, the people there are aware of their interdependence with nature, so the sounds are also more animistic, more primal. In North India, the Gangetic Plains, one of the most fertile lands in the world, the sounds are inspired from all these colors, the fruits, the flowers. Rena, 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 Rena. In China, open and wide landscapes, so much so that there's silence in the music. I'll play a little bit for you a Chinese instrument. These instruments which carry stories, it's so hard to find a cool teacher. You only find gurus. And I had begun modifying the structure of the instrument. That would be blasphemy for a guru. So I just began listening to other musicians, other players, and playing quietly in the background, listening to the ornaments in their playing. And in the same time, I experimented with the sounds that the instrument carried. That is a very empowering process because whenever you discover a sound on your own, you have a personal relationship with it. It is very different in comparison to learning something from a teacher. So I went on a new adventure to try and learn and play as many string instruments as I could. And each instrument taught me something new, a new perspective to look at the same music. So recently, I started learning the sarangi. And uh, I'll play it for you now, and I'll show how I mix the techniques of what I maybe learned from the Greek lira, or the Turkish tambur, or the Chinese eru. <laughs> Humans have a very bad habit of excessive control. 
Art is one place where we can really let go of that control. Just be in the moment, or rather the movement. The earth, the moon, the nature are always in movement. We, on the other hand, have lost connection to this movement for various reasons. Poisoning our ecology, polluting our rivers, trying to over-control nature, trying to grow too fast. So for me, music, especially improvised music, music created in and for the moment, the listeners have an opportunity to connect to this movement, even if it's, it's for a very short duration. The central theme of my music is to create a bridge, a bridge between musical and non-musical sounds. So that after a little listening, the non-musical sounds begin to have an unexpected meaning. Sometimes, even the experience is somatic. You're not only listening from your ears, but also from your body. That makes me feel like, is there one right way of listening to music, or one right way of feeling music, or one right way of learning music, one right way of teaching music, or is there even a one right way in life, or music, or relationships, or anything else? So, I feel it's more about finding our own way, our personal way. I have always thought about finding my own way, and music has always been a tool for me for self-discovery. For me, experimenting with our ethnic music traditions is a way for listening to our land. Music is not a man-made luxury. It's a part of our natural existence, our cultural heritage. There are songs and melodies and rhythms that have been played 3,000 years ago that are still being played. Music can say things that no words in any language can.
Thank you so much.